Hello my dear children, I am glad to meet you with an interesting science lesson. How are you keeping? I hope that everything is good and you are ready for your favorite science lesson with your writing book, textbook and the pen. As you have got your writing books in your hand, don't forget to take down all the important parts of the lesson while I am explaining. Ok, let's start the lesson. The surrounding where we live in is simply known as our environment. There are thousands of plant varieties in our environment and there are thousands of animal varieties in our environment. All these plants and animals are interacting with each other for various purposes. They have close relationships, they have interconnections. The animals want to satisfy their needs like food, habitat, security and to find out sexual partners. They satisfy their need oneself or as teams. Today we are going to learn about such type of interactions based on food. Our lesson is food related interactions unit 10 of your textbook. In this lesson I am going to discuss about food chains and food webs. In addition to food chains and food webs, I will explain you about the importance of food webs and food chains and different modes of nutrition of animals. Before starting the lesson, I have brought you some pictures to show you. We will see the pictures first and after that we can come back to the lesson. Yes, what is the animal given on the screen? you can easily identify there is a butterfly. We all love butterflies. The butterfly is a lovely animal. You can see that the butterfly is sucking nectar from a flower. Sucking nectar from a flower. Nectar is a plant material. Nectar is a plant material. So we can say that the butterfly is an animal which depends on plant material. Keep that in your mind. The butterfly is an animal which depends on plant material. Look at the second picture. Yes, you can identify the animal, a vicious animal. It's really dangerous. You can see the lion is eating flesh. It is eating meat. The lion is eating meat, so we can say that the lion is an animal which depends on flesh of other animals or meat of other animals. We consider as the lion is a good eater because it can eat a large amount of meat at one time. So finally, we can say that the lion is an animal which depends on meat. We will see the third picture. Yes, at the first glance you can identify the bird given on the picture. What is it? Yes, we can see it everywhere. That is a crow. That is a crow. It eats anything around it. It eats anything. That means the crow depends on both plant materials as well as flesh of other animals. They depend on both. Look at the fourth picture. What is the animal given on the screen? Yes, it is a bear. The animal is bear. You can see it is having a fish, but in addition to flesh of other animals, the bear is taking berries, grains, and plant material also. So we can consider that the bear is an animal which depends on both plant and animal material. Right? Can you understand? The bear is an animal which depends on both animal and plant material. Let's see the last picture. What is it? It is an eagle the king of the sky. 
It is a good hunter. It can fly fast. You can see it is taking the flesh of other animal. So we can say that the eagle is an animal which depends only on animal material. Right. By looking at the pictures, I think that you could understand the animals in our environment can be divided into three groups. They are the animals that consume plant materials. Second group is the animals that consume fish of other animals. And the third group is the animals that consume both plant and animal matter. Okay, children. By looking at the pictures, you could understand that the animals in our environment can be divided into three groups according to their food. Some animals in our environment consume only plant material. Some animals in our environment consume only the flesh of other animals. And some other animals in our environment consume both plant material and flesh of other animals. By keeping that in your mind, let's move on to the next slide. Mode of nutrition of animals. I have given you a table. The table has two columns in it. In the first column, you can see the names of the animals. And in the second column, the food taken by the animals are indicated. Let's see one by one. Look at the first row of the table. The animals like butterfly, zebra, they depend on plant material. The butterfly depends on nectar, you know it. The zebra depends on plant leaves, the leaves of the plants, fruits, vegetables, all are plant material. So you can understand that the first row of the table gives you the animals that consume only plant matter. Have a look at the second row of the table. Tiger, eagle and lion. You can see they consume only meat. They consume only meat. Look at the third row. The animals like crow, dog, even man consume both flesh of other animals and plant material. You have to understand that the animals in our surrounding can be grouped into three. In science, we give a special names for them. Now let's see how we name them. The animals that consume only plant material are called as herbivores. How do we call them? Herbivores. Or we call them herbivorous animals. The animals that consume flesh of other animals or meat are called as carnivores. Carnivores. Or we call them carnivorous animals. The animals that depend on both plant material as well as flesh of other animal are called as omnivores or omnivorous animals. Let's take one by one. Herbivorous animal. I have given you a simple explanation for herbivorous animals. Now you already know that. Let's read. Let's read. The animals that depend only on plant materials are called herbivores or herbivorous animals. Shall we repeat it? The animals that depend only on plant materials are called herbivores or herbivorous animals. Here are some examples for herbivorous animals. The elephant, rabbit and zebra. I'm sure that you have number of examples for this. You can write or you can add them in your list. Look at the second group of animals, carnivorous animals. The animals that depend only on flesh of other animals are called carnivores. Carnivores. The animals that depend only on flesh of other animals are called carnivores. We call them carnivorous animals. Here are some examples for carnivorous animals. 
the lion, tiger, eagle and crocodile. You can write your answers as well. Let us take about omnivorous animals, the animals that depend on both plant materials and flesh of other animals are called omnivores or we call them omnivorous animals. Let us repeat it, the animals that depend on both plant materials and flesh of other animals are called omnivores or omnivorous animals. Here are some examples for omnivorous animals. The bear, dog, cat and the crow. Uh, actually, there may be some problems when classifying the animals according to herbivores, carnivores or omnivores. In such a situation, we have to observe the feeding mechanisms of animals for a very long period of time then we can come to a correct decision. Here, the cat and dog are carnivorous animals in earlier stages. But now, as they are living with human being, they have become omnivorous animal, right? Now, we have got a simple activity. I am sure that you will help me to complete the activity. Will you help me? Okay, thank you. The activity is drag the animals and drop them in the correct column. I have given you, I have given you 10 animals there. What you have got to do is put in the animal into the correct category, right. Here are the animals given here, tiger, elephant, crow, bear, cat, goat, rat snake, cow, eagle and man. Let us do the activity. Yes, the tiger went to its correct position. Tiger is a carnivorous animal. It totally depends on flesh of other animals. The god. The god depend on plant material like plant leaves, then it is a herbivorous animal. Crow. When I started the lesson, I said you that it eats anything around it. It is an omnivorous animal. It is an omnivorous animal. Cow. Cow is an animal which depends on plant matter. It is a herbivorous animal. Then the eagle. Eagle depends on flesh of other animals. It is a carnivorous animal. The cat depends on both. So we can put it into the group of omnivorous. The elephant, we all know that, herbivorous animal. The man, we are omnivorous. We depend on both plant and animal matter. Then rat snake is a carnivorous animal. It depends on flesh of other animals. And finally, the bear. It is an animal which depends on both. Right? Now, we have categorized the animals into the correct groups. Goat, cow and elephant are in the group of herbivorous. Tiger, eagle and rat snake are in the group of carnivorous. And crow, cat, man and bear are in the group of omnivorous. Right. Let us see the next one. Right. My dear children, I have given you a connection here. Now, I have given you a connection between plants and animals. Look at the connection given on the screen. You can see that there is a plant. The plant is consumed by the cow and the cow is consumed by the tiger. Once again, the plants are consumed by the cow 
and the cow is consumed or the cow is eaten by the tiger. Here there are three links in the connection. There are three links in the connection. First link, second link and the third link. We can call them as units also. Link is similar to the unit. First unit, second unit and third unit. The plant is in the first link or first unit as the plant is the producer. We call the plants as producers. The second link is known as the consumer as it is consuming the plant and third link is considered as the consumer also. So you can say that the first link is the producer and second links are consumers. I have got another two examples. You can observe the examples given here. Here also the first link is represented by a plant and the rabbits are eating plants and the fox is eating the rabbit. In the second one you can see the plant is eaten by the cow and the cow is eaten by the lion. Right? The connections are clear. Let's see some other examples. You can see there is a plant that is the first link, first link of the connection. Then there is a rat, then the rat is consumed by the rat snake. The connection is clear. Look at the last one. The plants are consumed by the goat, the goat is consumed by the tiger. Okay my dear children. By looking at those connections, you can understand that there is a connection, there is a strong connection between plants and animals. These connections are showing the relationship among the living things for food. It looks like a chain. A chain for what? A chain for food. So we call these connections as food chains. How do we call them? food chains. Now I have given you five food chains here. Now you already know what is known as a food chain but I thought uh, it will be important for you to give a simple definition for a food chain. So here I am going to give you a definition for a food chain. What is known as a food chain? A linear sequence that starts from a green plant or a part of a plant. It can be a plant, if not it can be a part of a plant like leaves, yams, fruits like that. And shows the flow of energy from one animal to another is simply known as a food chain. It's better if you can take this down. I'm sure that you have got your writing books in your hand. Once again, let's read it. What is known as a food chain? A linear sequence that starts from a green plant or a part of a plant and shows the flow of energy from one animal to another is simply known as a food chain. Right, I have got a question to ask you. The question is why do food chains start from green plants? You observed five food chains, you observed five connections for food between the plants and animals. You observed a common feature in these connections. The common feature is all these connections are started from a green plant. Is there a reason to start these connections in green plants? Yes, there is a reason. We will see the reason. Why do food chains start with green plants? Plants are called as producers because they are able to use light energy from the sun to produce sugar or food in the plants. That is the answer. Shall we see the answer another time? Why do food chains start with plants? The plants are called as producers because they are able to use light energy from the sun to produce sugar or food in the plants. 
My dear children, you know that the green plants have a special ability. The ability is they can use solar power. They can use the sunlight. They can use sunlight to produce food. The green plants have got that ability. We do not have that ability. The process of producing food in green plant is known as photosynthesis. You know it. The ability of producing food in green plants is known as photosynthesis. Here I think uh, uh, it will be important for you to explain a little about photosynthesis. We will see it. I have given you a simple diagram that indicates the process of photosynthesis. You can easily understand the uh, diagram given on the screen. There is a green plant, the sunlight, carbon dioxide, water, sugar and oxygen. There is a green plant, a green plant, green, always I emphasize the word green. Why? What is the reason? Yes, the plants are green because they contain a special color pigment called chlorophyll. The plant cells contain chloroplast and they have chlorophyll inside the chloroplast. Chlorophyll have got a special ability to absorb the sunlight. They have got a special ability to absorb the sunlight. So you have to keep that in your mind and let's see the process of photosynthesis. Okay. You can see that the plant is absorbing the sunlight. The plant is absorbing the sunlight and there is carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. There is carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Our atmosphere contains a large amount of gases, different types of gases, but the gas which is used in the process of photosynthesis is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is absorbed to the plant through the stomata. There are special holes in the plant leaves called a stomata. Then carbon dioxide is absorbed to the plant through the stomata. Then there is water in the soil. The water available in the soil is known as soil water. Then through the roots of the plant, the water is absorbed to the plant. Then you can see the water is absorbed to the plant, right? Then you can see in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water are used as raw materials and let's see the products of the process. Here are the products of the process, sugar and oxygen. These are the products. Then once again you have to understand. Now you see the green plant absorbs sunlight then carbon dioxide and water are used as raw materials and then they produce sugar and oxygen. Sugar is the main product of the process of photosynthesis and oxygen is the byproduct. Now this is the process of photosynthesis. I am sure that you got an idea about the process, right? Here also I have given you several food chains. They are carrot is consumed by the rabbit and the rabbit is consumed by the fox. Grains are eaten by birds, then the birds are eaten by the fox. You see the fox depends on the bird and the bird depends on grasshopper and grasshopper depends on grass, right? You have to understand that all these food chains are started from plant or plant material. Carrot is a plant material, grains are plant materials and grass is also a plant material. All these connections are started from plant material. Now let us check whether what has happened to these food chains. Yes, you see now this is not a chain, the chains are connected with each other from common links. So you have to understand that these chains are connected to form a web, a web for food. So we call that food web. How do we call it? Food web. Now we have already discussed about the food chains, then uh, here is a food web. 
because we can see a number of food chains here. The food chains are interconnected with each other from the common links. So, you can understand that this is a web. Why do we say as this is a web? The reason is one animal can depend on different types of food. That is the reason. We will see. You see here are the plant materials, carrot, grass and grains. Then the plant materials are consumed by the bird, then the bird is consumed by the fox, right. Then once again there are plant material, then the rabbit consume the plant material and the rabbit is consumed by the fox. Let us see another path. The plant materials are observed by the grasshopper, then grasshopper is eaten by the owl. So, you can see there is another path. So, by connecting all these connections together, a food web is formed. The speciality of the food web is one animal can depend on different types of food. That is so important thing. Uh, one animal can depend on different types of food. We call such a connection, such a relationship as a food web. Right, here also I have given you a simple description about food web. A food web is the natural interconnection of food chains. A food web is the natural interconnection of food chains. Food webs show the feeding relationships among the animals. Food webs show the feeding relationships among the animals. Okay, my dear children. Now, I have given you another food web on the screen. You have to identify the food chains that are connected to form the food web. I will help you. Okay, let us do the activity. You can see there is a green plant. This is the green plant. The green plant is consumed by the mouse and the mouse is consumed by the owl or snake. Then again kite takes the snake. Kite is a bird which uh, can eat uh, snakes. Then you can see the green plant is consumed by the rabbit. Then wild cat eats the rabbit and the wild cat is eaten by the lion. Right? Let us see another one. There is a green plant. The god eats the green plant and the jackal eats the god or directly the god is eaten by the lion. Then the lion can eat the jackal also, right. Then the green plant is consumed by the rabbit, then the jackal takes the rabbit. So, you can see all these connections are combined together, they are connected. So, this is a food web. So, if I ask you to identify food chains in this food web, uh, will you be able to do that? I will help you, okay. Right, once again you can have a look at the diagram. So, you can understand the animals given on the diagram. It is very easy to identify. Uh, my question is, identify three food chains with four links in this food web. So, you have to identify different food chains in this food web. Right. So, you can identify food chains with three links, but I want here a food chain with four links. You have to identify uh, several food chains. I have given you there three food chains. You have to identify three food chains with four links. Right. Now, I am sure that you have already identified the food chains. Now, you can check whether your answers are similar with my answers. Okay. Now, I am going to give you my answers. Let us check. Right. Here are the answers. Green plant. Where is the green plant? Ah, here is the green plant. Then goat, jackal and the lion. There are four links. The first answer is correct. Look at the second one, green plant, 
mouse, snake, and kite. One, two, three, four. There are four links. A food chain with four links. Look at the third one. Green plant, then rabbit, wild cat, and it is consumed by the lion. Yes, there are four links. One, two, three, four. There are four links. Okay, I'm sure that you have found the answers. Then here are the answers. Green plant, goat, jackal, and lion. Here is the green plant. Then the goat, jackal, and the lion. Then look at the second one. The green plant is consumed by the mouse. Then snake and the kite. One, two, three, four. There are four links. Because you are asked to find out food chains with four links. That is the reason. Then look at the last one. Green plant, then rabbit, wild cat and the lion. There are four links. Now we have already identified three food chains with four links. Right? Are your answers correct? Yes, good. Various types of food webs can be found in different environments. Our environment consists of different ecosystems like aquatic ecosystems, forest, grassland, soil or decaying logs also are considered as the ecosystems. So, there are different types of food webs can be found in different ecosystems. We can find food webs in the soil. You know that there are organisms living in the soil. They have connections for food. Then in aquatic ecosystems like oceans, rivers, tanks, like that, there are food webs in the aquatic ecosystems also. In forests, there is high biodiversity. So we can expect a large number of food webs in a forest as well as in grasslands. In grasslands also there is low biodiversity but we can identify food webs. Right. What is the animal given on the screen? A lovely animal. I know that you love this animal. Yes, I hear your answer. You said me that this is panda, the giant panda known as panda bear. This is a total herbivorous animal which lives in mountain forest in central China. Do you know that this animal is in the threat of extinction? It is in the threat of extinction. Why is that? There is a reason. The reason is this animal is totally dependent on one type of food. It doesn't have a variety in its food. If there is a diversity among the food consumed by this animal, it can survive more. But the problem is it can survive only one type of food. What is the food taken by this animal? It is taking only the tender leaves and tender parts of bamboo plant. It is, only t it is taking only the tender leaves and tender parts of the bamboo plant. When the population of bamboo plants is gradually decreasing, what will happen to the number of panda? Yes, that is also gradually decreasing. So that is the result for facing this animal to the threat of extinction. So can't we prevent it? So the, already the steps have been taken to conserve this animal. When a certain animal is depending on a variety of food, their survival is more established. If a certain animal depends on a variety of food, it can survive. If there is no a food, it can depend on another type of food. So it can survive. Let's see the next slide. Once again, I have got a simple activity. Drag the pictures and drop them in the correct blanks. I have given you four pictures there. You can identify the pictures given here. First picture is a cow. Second one is a fox. Third one grass or plant material. And the last one is 
the lion. Now, what I have got to do is put in the pictures to the correct position. Okay, let us do the activity. Uh, will you help me? Okay. Yes, now see the producer green plants went to the correct position. It should come at first because the producers are representing the first link of a food chain. Out of the animals given here, cow, uh, fox and the lion, which animal should come to the next position? We will see. Yes, the cow should come there. The reason is out of the animals given here, cow is the only herbivorous animal. It depends on plant material, so we have taken cow there. Right, the cow is consumed by the fox and finally the lion. Good. Now you see there is the producer and there are three consumers. Here I want to explain you that the producers are producing food. They store the energy of the sun. The energy stored in the producers or the food stored in the producers is transferred from link to link. Can you understand? So, what I explained you is in a food chain the first link is the producer. The producer is always using the sunlight and it can produce food and it can store energy. The energy in the green plant is transferred through the food chain and the food stored in the green plant is also transferred through the food chain. Then you can see that when the cow eats grass, the cow gets the energy stored in the grass and when the fox depends on the cow, the energy stored in the cow goes to the body of fox and then the lion depends on the fox, then the energy is transferred to the lion. So, what I wanted to explain you is the energy stored in the green plants is transferred directly or indirectly. The energy stored in the green plants is transferred directly or indirectly along the food chain. Understood? Right. Let us see the next one. Now, I am going to explain you about the importance of food web. I think uh, you can remember when I explained you about giant panda, I said you that when a certain animal depends on a variety of food, its uh, survival is more established. We said that. In the same way, the food webs are very important to provide alternative sources of food to animals. So, the animals survive just with the help of food webs. Look at the first one. Food webs provide a stability to the ecosystems by providing alternate sources of food. Yes, the food webs provide a stability to the ecosystems by providing alternate sources of food because the animals can uh, depend on different types of food they will not have to die, so they can survive. It is really important, the food webs are very important for that. Look at the second one. It helps in the survival of the endangered species. My dear children, what do you mean by endangered species? Endangered species means the animal species that are in the threat of extinction. It helps in the survival of the endangered species. The survival of endangered species is more established by the food webs. When animals feed on a variety of food, their existence is more established. Right? Now, here are the points that I have given you under the importance of food web. I am sure that you can uh, understand the importance of food webs and food chains for the survival of biosphere. 
right. Now, I want to assess whether you learned what I taught you. So, I am going to do a little revision for that. My question is, compare food chains and food webs. You already know that the food chains is a linear sequence. Food chain is a linear sequence. The food chains are connected with each other to form food webs. This is the answer. Food webs show how plants and animals are connected in many ways to help them all survive. I think you can understand simple English. Food webs show how plants and animals are connected in many ways. They are connected in different, different ways, in many ways to help them all survive. But food chains follow just one path of energy as animals find food. Food chains show one path of energy as the animals find the food. Write an aquatic food web. So, when we are writing a food web that can be found in an aquatic environment, you can find uh, a food web in a lake or in a river or in an ocean. Here, I have selected a food web that can be found in the ocean. Right. Now, you see that the planktons they are known as the producers in the ocean. Then the planktons are consumed by the krill and the krill is consumed by the squid. Then planktons are consumed by krill and it is consumed by whale. Then the krill is consumed by quid and a squid is again consumed by seal. Then planktons are again eaten by krill and krill is consumed by whale then krill is eaten by seagull also. So, you can see that there are a number of food chains. They are connected with common links to form the food web. Right? My dear children, now I am going to sum up the lesson. Let us see the summary of the lesson. I am going to summarize what we have learned so far. Animals are categorized into three major groups according to their feeding habits. We learn that the animals in our environment can be categorized into three groups according to herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. Then food chains and food webs are very important to maintain the balance of the environment. So, we were talking about that. I explained you the importance of food webs and food chains. The energy stored in green plants is transferred among animals through food chains and food webs. I explained you. The energy is stored in green plants and it is transferred through the food chains. The energy stored in green plants is going from link to link in a food chain. Okay, my dear children, these are the things we learned through today's lesson. We have come to the end of today's lesson. In addition to all the subject matter I taught you, I have got another important thing to teach you. So, you have to keep that lesson in your mind. You must understand that each and every animal living in our environment has an equal right to live freely. So, you have to protect the plants and animals living in our environment. You have to be very careful when you are handling the environment because plants and animals are our best friends. We have to protect them because they do a great job to maintain the survival of the biosphere. Uh, you have to keep that in your mind and uh, now I am going to leave your place. Thank you very much for joining with today's lesson. Until I meet you with an another interesting science lesson, stay safe and goodbye. Thank you.